Hello everyone, and welcome back. With three years into the career, we are nearing the completion of the beginning programs. Early rocket development now has one final objective remaining, 5,000 kilometers downrange. But with three years before the deadline, we will be holding onto this program a bit longer. Suborbital research, on the other hand, will be reaching the peak of its funding in roughly nine months. Because of this, the priority of 1954 is to complete the first advanced biosuborbital experiment. Once we complete the program, we can accept early satellites heavy, which will be a massive boost in funding and bring us into the orbital era. We have an R1 launch for the downrange contract in February to kick off the year. Similar to the previous launches, this carries along a film camera to collect some science with the sounding payload. On average, the planetary photography can bring back close to four science points per launch. And almost like a repeat from the previous year, the RD100 has a performance loss. This one will not be recoverable, so the best we can get is some flying high photography. Enough science points was gathered, so into R&D to spend points on satellite era electronics research and satellite era science. After which, into the VAB. To close out the suborbital research program, the R2 rocket will be used for the advanced bio contract. Being the next iteration from the R1, the RD100 is changed to the RD101 configuration, and the tanks are stretched to maintain 90 seconds of burn time, bringing the rocket to almost 20 tons. The film camera is replaced with the advanced biological experiment, and the high pressure tank has a sounding payload capacity reduced to 300 units per the contract requirements. Now incompatible with the original LC2, the complex is modified to accommodate the increased height, tonnage, and GSC. The increased LC size also means the MAX engineers will bump up from 77 to 95. The bioexperiment grind continues with another MR2 launch. These are becoming pretty routine, and unlike the RD100, we have not been experiencing any engine failures with the U2000. Taking a break from the bioexperiments, another 130 km altitude contract rocket takes flight. It's been 301 days since the altitude contract was launched which means it's a 213% reward compared to the nominal value. This specific launch nets 105 confidence. Every little bit helps, as there will be a noticeable slowdown once suborbital research is closed and early satellites is taken. What I am aiming to do is have enough confidence to take on early sats and early lunar probes on breakneck. And here we are now for the launch of the Advanced Biological Experiment. This one is flown like the other R1s, but will aim for a final pitch of 45 degrees. Things get a bit hot on the ascent, and the tip of the aerospike explodes from overheating. As we break 140 kilometers, we are at 2300 meters per second, so just barely over the requirements for the contract, but a success. On the descent, things were looking like it was close to a failure, but the parachutes thankfully survived the re-entry heating. With the final objective completed, we can now close out and complete the suborbital research program. There's no need to hold on to this one for any longer, as the payout is minuscule compared to the satellite programs. A substantial amount of funding is needed for the 280-ton R7, so heavy sats is the route we will take. Enough confidence was farmed, so the program will be taken on breakneck. For the month of June, we have a bio-experiment launch, which should be the final one needed to gather the remainder of the samples. But luck would have it, we have our first U-2000 engine failure with an engine shutdown. It could have been worse, and these are cheap and quick enough to build that it is not that big of a deal much better than if the 3,000-kilometer rocket or the advanced bio failed. 
which would have delayed progress three to four months. So five weeks later, we try again, and this time a full burn. This will be in space just long enough to gather the last bit of space low science. And with the recovery of the samples, the launch complex for this rocket can be dismantled. Now with the large influx of funding, we can afford increasing researchers. So auto hire is set to 250, and then some warping to the next launch. September, another optional downrange contract is launched. This is similar to the R1 variant. However, it needs to be underfueled to be just above the 15 ton LC limit. Even from the ascent, you can see it gets a bit toasty, causing the tip to overheat and explode. A northern launch was chosen as I needed to get more science for the new biomes, and grasslands are in that direction. Now it is time to prep for the 5,000 kilometer contract. Unlike the 3,000 kilometer, this one requires 50 units of sounding payload, adding an extra layer of difficulty. The design is over the current LC limit, so a 4 day modification is needed to increase the tonnage to 21. Then the tooling is purchased and it is added to the build queue. While we wait for that to be built, more researchers are hired until the count reaches 350. Then before basic rocketry was started to be researched, I headed into the administration building to let go of Douglas Aircraft Company, as they have a negative trait to early and orbital rocket research speeds. And in their place, I hired JPL for the science, avionics, and electronics research. This helps shave the current research queue by six weeks. And here is the 5,000 kilometer launch. This one is pitched over a little bit slower to get a bit more altitude before staging the U-2000s. Similar as before, 35 degrees final pitch, spin stabilization, and hot stage one second before RD-101 burnout. All four engines light. If one or two engines fail to ignite, this should still be able to maintain stability as the engines are rotated slightly to have their thrust vectors aimed through the center of mass. The next two staging events go flawlessly, setting us on course to complete the contract. We receive the message that the contract is successful as well as the notice that we have completed all the objectives for the early rocket development program. Now we are at the point to build the R7 launch complex. This will take roughly nine months, and I am timing this build to be complete at the same time that the 1956 and 1957 rocketry is unlocked. This will be going through various LC modifications over the decades so I just built the minimum requirements to start. I also added some resources to accommodate using the U-2000 for an upper stage. We won't be expecting to launch the first R7 until middle of 1956, so another plan will be put into motion to achieve first orbit in a few months. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.